When you hear the word tradition, snowboarding isn't usually your next thought. But the U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships has a legacy of tradition that makes this event unparalleled in the untraditional world of professional snowboarding. And I always like the Stratton Halfpipe. Stratton's pretty much where I learned, and it's kind of hometown, East Coast. And look at that crowd. That's what rules. <laughs> Everyone's tired, but we're all excited to be here at the Open. I mean, it's the best event for snowboarding, that's for sure. Heat in it. And uh, it's just, it's the event with the most soul. It's the original snowboard event, and uh, it's now still the biggest snowboard event. The people, on the, the crowd, Burton. It's just the best event there is. We couldn't have said it better. Stay with us as Mountain Dew and Burton present the premier event of pro snowboarding, the U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. and welcome to beautiful Stratton Mountain, Vermont for the 15th annual U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. Hello once again, Todd Harris along with the editor of Snowboarding Online, Lee Crane. Lee, all you have to do is look behind us and you know exactly where you are. Every year at this time, everyone on the Eastern Seaboard who knows anything about snowboarding shows up for the U.S. Open Halfpipe. We're expecting crowds of up to 10,000 people here today. This thing goes off. It's the biggest snowboard competition in the world. With it being the biggest in the world, we have got the best riders in the world. And Lee, just name a few. Three of the guys in the contest today have won this before. Jimmy Scott won it last year. Todd Richards has won it, and of course, Terry A. Hawkinson. Now, Terry A. Hawkinson and Todd Richards finished number one and number two at South Lake Tahoe three weeks ago in the World Championship, so there's going to be a battle there. All right, we will also show you the women's half pipe competition taking place today as well, but right now, let's go to the top of the pipe at Stratton Mountain. And up top, getting ready to drop in right now is the defending U.S. Open champion, Jimmy Scott. An interesting format change this year. All the riders get to take three runs. The two highest scores are combined for the final score. That means they get to drop their lowest score. And after two runs, it is Todd Richards with a 68.3. We move on now to Jimmy Scott with a total of 53.8. Lee, he needs to drop that 26-1. Jimmy needs to trade in that 26.1 for a perfect score of 40 if he even wants to get close to Todd Richards. Remember the 40-point scale. At this point, Jimmy Scott cannot knock Todd Richards out of first place, but he might be able to squeeze in for a second. Here he is, the defending U.S. Open champion, looking for a spot on the podium. We talked to Jimmy earlier and he said that today he was going to ride big. He wanted to go for the big air. A lot of times people say that he stays low and just does technical tricks. At the top of the pipe so far, Jimmy's showing that he can go big. Jimmy throwing a spin in. Remember the judge is looking for that mix of tricks and Jimmy mixing it up in the middle right now. Pulls out the McTwist. So far, Jimmy Scott very consistent. That is his trademark as he makes his way to the bottom of the pipe lead. This is a really solid run, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to get a 40. Jimmy was riding solid, but he didn't have the amplitude and the energy at the bottom part of the pipe, right where the judges are going to be noticing it most. Jimmy started off his run going huge on the first two hits, trying to show everyone that he can do the big air maneuvers. Then as he goes down the pipe, he becomes more technical. The amplitude starts coming in lower. He gets in and throws a beautiful McTwist, grabs on the board, perfectly executed. Now, it wasn't as high as we'd like to have seen it. The judges give him a score of 27.9. That's going to move him up a little to 55.6, but it's nowhere near enough. Our next competitor, Trevor Andrew, out of Canada. He sits now with a 23-7, which he will most likely drop his second run of 28-7 for a total lead of 52.4. Todd, that means that it is possible for Trevor Andrews to knock Todd Richards out of that top position. What he needs, though, is a 39.7. That's as close to perfect as you can get. We'll see if he can pull it off. Monstrous backside air on the second hit. Trevor boosting into a lean air, carrying a lot of speed, getting a lot of air at the top and getting a lot of encouragement from the packed house here at Stratton Mount. He is going absolutely huge and throws out the 720. The double spin into the double grab. Trevor ripping it up at the bottom of the pipe here at Stratton. Trevor Andrew having a great run here, Lee, and I think the kid from Canada put on quite a show. Trevor Andrew is pulling out the alley-oop 720, two complete rotations right in front of the judges. And the judges award him with a 32.2. That gives him a 60.9, a very solid score for Trevor Andrew. When we come back to Stratton Mountain, Vermont, we'll have more of the U.S. Open. 
The U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships are brought to you by Burton Snowboard, rider owned and operated since 1977, and by Mountain Dew, do the do. Welcome back to Stratton Mountain, Vermont, and ESPN's coverage of the 1997 U.S. Open Snowboarding Championship presented by Rolling Stone Magazine and Kodak. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane, we are in the men's half pipe final, and next up from Gloversville, New York, it will be Jamil Khan. This is Jamil Khan's debut performance in a finals in the U.S. Open half pipe. He's been here year after year trying to get in, and this year he's finally made it right into the finals. Well, I grew up here, so this is home home turf, kind of. My, my parents are here, and they've never seen me snowboard. They haven't seen me snowboard since I was, like, 10, you know. I've just been traveling, and they, they never really saw it first at hand, and this is the first contest my mom's come to ever, so I'm stoked. Well, here you go, Mr. and Mrs. Khan. Your son needs a 37.8 to take the lead. Jamil busted it out at the top, going way out of the pipe, carrying a lot of speed. See if he can hold on to it all the way down to the bottom of the pipe. Jamil busting out the stale fish to show the judges the trick mix into a 540. It's a 360 setting up for a big spin. Jamil busting out the 720. Reverts out through the finish. We'll see what the judges think of that last spin. Well, the judges and the rest of the 10,000 people here, including Jamil's parents, sound pretty stoked on that one. Can you imagine coming to this event and seeing your son ride for the first time? 10,000 people screaming and yelling. Jamil busting it out. He pulled out a 540, and I think at the end, he actually went for 900. That's a two and a half complete rotation spin. He sets up and throws it, comes up just a little bit short. The judge is now giving Jamil a score of 29.8 for that final run. That means his total is 60.4. That moves Jamil Khan into fifth place with five riders to go. It looks like this. Todd Richards, Zebu Kuhlberg, and Daniel Frank and Trevor Andrews tied for third. We're going to take a short break in the men's half pipe action to show you the women's highlights. Like in the men's competition, this event attracts the top women from around the world. Women's half-pipe competition has come a long way in just a few short years, and that has been made apparent by the way they have attacked this huge Stratton Mountain pipe. These are not timid women. Norway, Finland, Sweden, Germany, Austria, Canada, and Japan were all represented in this year's Burton event, but none of them can unseat the USA in the women's half-pipe competition. Bronze, silver, and gold would all be won by the home team. Salem, Oregon's Michelle Taggart in third, followed by Trisha Burns in second, and the winner of the half-pipe, Barrett Christie. You know, I've never competed in the open in the pipe before. Never made it past the pre-qualifiers before. So, I don't know, I think it's it's fun that there's so many enthusiastic people. You know, it's just, it's really the best riders. It's pretty rad. Our final results for the women look like this. Barrett Christie, Trisha Burns, Michelle Taggart, Stina Broom Killis, and Shannon Dunn. Back at the top of the pipe, it is Ross Powers, another one of the guys who can call this half pipe home. Ross from Vermont, he's on the United States snowboard team. On his first run, he had a 31.0, followed it up with a 28.3, so Ross riding extremely solid today. Ross Powers, one of our last five competitors to drop in, he needs a 37.4 to take the lead. Carrying a lot of speed into the first hit, does an in the air. Into a 720, lands it faking. Ross going backwards up the wall, that makes it a lot harder. Pulls a 360 degree spin into another air. Ross Powers mixing up the tricks here, and you can't tell me that home cooking doesn't play into this one because he has got every single person on his side right now. It looks a little bit like Ross lost his way halfway down the pipe. He didn't get as many spins as he should have gotten in. We'll see what the judges say. And the judges give him a 29.0, which gives Ross Powers a 60 even. That takes him to sixth place. We'll be back with more from the U.S. Open right after this. Does that make a difference in your riding when you hear the crowd? Yeah, hell yeah. You get so psyched on the walls when you're mid-method. People are going, ah! 
Ah, you're so... Yeah! <laughs> Good stuff. Welcome back to Stratton Mountain, the 1997 U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships presented by Mountain Dew and Burton Snowboards. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane, we are down to our final four. This is Zabu Kuhlberg. In Zabu's first run, he got a 32.2. He followed that up with a 30.0, giving him a combined score right now of 62.2. That means if he wants to take the lead, he's going to need a 36.2. In other words, the highest score of the contest so far. Zabu Kuhlberg coming from Finland, going big. Zebu carrying so much speed at the top of the pipe, drifting down the side. He comes in fakie, spins a 720 degree spin two times around. Zebu riding like a madman right now. Then he throws in the McTwist lead back to back. Unbelievable. Zebu goes for the backside McTwist, carries it right into an alley oop McTwist, and then finishes it off. He mixed the tricks up, he got the amplitude. The judges are going to have to reward Zebu Kulberg for this run. As we go back up to the top and have a look at this unbelievable run, Lee, it started from the get-go. He carried so much speed as he drifted down the pipe. Zebu used the rollout to carry a lot of speed, get a lot of air at the top. Then as he got down near the bottom, he started spinning. Once he started spinning, he didn't stop. He went three in a row with the McTwist. He did one backside, he did one alley-oop, and he finished off with a frontside. The judges give him a score of 29.6. Todd, that's not nearly as high as I thought he'd get scored for this run. That only gives him a total of 62.2, and that takes us to our next Scandinavian rider, Daniel Frank from Norway. Daniel's highest score so far, a 32.2 in the second run. His total right now, 60.9. He's tied with Trevor Andrews at third place. Remember, he needs a 36.2 to take the lead, and so far, the highest score in the contest was the first run turned in by Todd Richards, and that was a 34.7. Here he is, Daniel Frank dropping in, much like Sebu Kuhlberg with a lot of speed, and he carries it down. Daniel Frank smacks the first two hits, big, huge, drifty airs, pulls out a McTwist way out of the pipe. The crowd definitely fueling Daniel Frank on this run today. Oh, and Daniel Frank gets just over the nose, Lee, and he is done. Daniel goes for that 720 degree spin, lands in the flat bottom a little too far forward, rolls over and all his speed is gone. We'll see how the judges scored those first five hits though, because he was macking. Lee, he was carrying so much speed on this hit, he absolutely went off. This was the real deal. One of the highest McTwists we've seen in the contest. Daniel deciding to go for speed rather than for technicality. Pulls out a nice 720, but just goes over the nose and it ends it for him right there. The judges give Daniel a score of 27 points. That means it's going to be his throwout score, and he will remain with a 60.9 for his final score. Because that throwout was a 27 points, that means Daniel Frank moves into third ahead of Trevor Andrews. 15 years ago, when the first U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships were held, Alpine racing was a big part of the event. The same holds true today, and the fastest competitors the planet has to offer raced in three disciplines. The dual slalom took place on Upper Sun Tanner Run, head-to-head, -head, rail to rail gate racing, where strength, rhythm, stamina, and technical expertise from countless training runs might help a racer beat his opponent by a split second. To the line. He'll start the timer. Frenchman Nicolas Kant was the fastest qualifier and beat Austrian Martin Ferronimitz in the consolation final, deciding third and fourth place respectively. Austrian Dieter Hopp beat American Chris Klug by 0.4 of a second in the first run of the men's final. And after switching courses, the two raced again, and it was equally close. The announcement was finally made. It was Chris Klug who'd made up the difference and become the dual slalom champion. No, I wasn't worried. I knew um, there's a lot. All, all three of those Europeans are great slalom riders. They've been in the final all year long, and I, I had to take a lot of risks to win. So that's just what I did. I knew what I had to do. In the women's final, Brigitte Koch of Austria defeated a struggling Christine Rauter to capture the women's title. At the, bottom, the following day, the Alpine racers competed on Stratton's Super G course. Longboards, speed suits, helmets, precise edge control, and courage combine in a one-run shot at the fastest times and sometimes disaster. Yeah. 
As in the dual slalom, Austrian Dieter Hopp made his presence felt. He was first on course and finished with a time of 56.38. The next racer to leave the gate was American Ian Price. He smoked the course and would have to watch from the bottom as 60 more racers tried to better his time. Canadian Mark Fawcett attacked with naked aggression and beat Hop's time for second with a 55.56, but that was as close as anyone would get to Ian's time. It was really super fast. Your eyes start to water about halfway down the course, and you're like, oh, man, I'm moving. But it was it was a decent run, and it was definitely fast. I mean, sometimes the, the ones that don't feel the fastest are the fastest, so I think that's what happened today. In the women's Super G, Lisa Kozglow, who broke her back in this race last year, and Austrian Brigitte Koch matched each other to the hundredth of a second. They tied for first with a time of 62.55 seconds and proved they're two of the best in the world. The final Alpine event was the Citizens Bank Slalom. By design, it brings together hard boot Alpine carvers and soft boot freestyle flyers, hardcore sponsored pros, and budget-minded weekend warriors. It's an opportunity to win a grudge match with a buddy or rub elbows with the world's best. One thing for sure, everyone comes to compete. When the snow settled, it was Burton team rider Martin Fernandez winning for the men and veteran racer Betsy Shaw winning in the women's division. Congratulations to everyone who put on a bib. Still to come, we've got the big air competition, plus two of the best half-pipe riders in the world going head-to-head. -head. Stay with us. Hotel accommodations provided by Stratton, Vermont's Mountain Resort. Welcome back to Stratton Mountain, Vermont, and ESPN's coverage of the 1997 U.S. Open Snowboarding Championships. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane. You know, Stratton seems to have something for everyone. Stratton is truly a resort that takes care of all your needs. It's an all-mountain resort. Um, you can come here, you start coming to Stratton for snowboarding, and before you know it, you find yourself here in the summer. Be it golf, uh, it's a great place for family because they have shops, restaurants, great places to eat drink, socialize, great nightlife, but it's not crammed down your throat. You don't have to be involved in it. Um, you can pick and choose uh, anything Stratton has to offer. We got wide open groom. We got uh, great bumps. We got awesome skiing, awesome riding, and sense of community as well. It's a real tight hub. Our thanks to Stratton Mountain for being such an awesome host of the U.S. Open. It comes down to this in the half pipe. So far, no one has been able to knock Todd Richards out of the top spot. Terrier tried in his second run with that big, humongous McTwist, but he got onto the lip a little hard, slammed down, and he scored only a 16. If Terrier wants to take the title again, he's going to need a 35.3 lead. Here he is on the first hit. Terrier carrying speed, and he mocks the McTwist, lands it perfectly, follows it up with a stale fish about four feet out. Terrier is terrorizing this pipe. This guy comes to us from Norway, but the crowd does not seem to care. They are just absolutely loving this performance. Terrier throws the 720 into the 540, lands it fake. He's setting up for his signature maneuver, the hawk and flip. He hasn't thrown one for a long time now, but he decides to do it right here in his final run at the U.S. Open. Terrier Hawkinson absolutely stoking the crowd here. He won this event two years ago, Lee, and he may be poised to win it again. Terrier started off his run with what is probably the highest McTwist we've ever seen at the U.S. Open. Lands it on the lip. He carries his spinning on down with a 540, lands fakie, and sets up for a maneuver.